Hey, good morning, SBC 205. Uh, real quick, wanted to give you some feedback on your outlines. Um, I've gone through all of them so far this morning, um, Monday morning. I uh, want to hit a couple of things that we're having problems with across the board, save you guys some points on your speech. First of all, attention devices. Okay, for everybody, almost everybody had an attention device. That's great. Some of them weren't need, need work. Just making a statement at the beginning of a speech is not an attention device. It has to be something to gain attention. So to get up there and say, Clark Hill Reservoir exists in Columbia County, Georgia, and covers 16,000 square acres, that's not an attention device. Okay, It's got to be a startling fact, a startling quote, something that's going to make us want to listen to you. <clears throat> um, Okay, uh, so work on that. I had to make that comment on more than a couple of occasions for people. It's, it seems to be a problem that people are just putting in these, these statements. Also, if you're going to give us a startling statistic, 42% of all people will die tomorrow because of carbon dioxide asphyxiation. I need a source for that statistic. You can't just say it. Okay, so you need to start with according to, give the statistic and follow it with, and that's from... But you can't just make a startling statement and then uh, expect us to take it at face value. You have to source that in your attention device. Okay, uh, other problem that's still recurring that's going to cost you more and more points as we go along because I've said this multiple times. Uh, you need to highlight your evidence where it's going to be used in the speech. A couple of y'all made your fifth main point, your bibliography for some reason. A couple of you just didn't, a bunch of you just didn't bother. Many of you didn't highlight it, so I had to dig through it. You know, on this next outline, if you can't figure out, when I go to grade it, if you can't figure out where the how to highlight the evidence, I'm going to grade it like there's no evidence there. You should be highlighting that as part of your visualization of your speech. Okay, That should be something you're doing. It's not a requirement for me to make my life easier. It's something you should be doing to help you visualize your speech because couple of times I went digging into those outlines to, uh, today and people would have three pieces of evidence in their problem section and then when you get down to the solution they got nothing okay and that should be easy to spot okay so just just to give you a heads up you need to put your evidence where it's going to be used in the speech and you need to make sure it's highlighted and easy to see somehow and if you copy and paste it over to Blackboard and you can't figure out how to turn it red or how to underline it, go in there. You can put in characters, put in three asterisks before and after. Do something to make it stand out, okay? All right, now let's get into the actual structure of the speeches themselves. Problem solution has to have four parts. The problem comes in two parts, cause and effect, and the solution comes in practicality can we do it in efficacy? Will it solve your problem? First of all, a number of you just skipped the problem part, just went straight to solution. If you don't show me that there's a problem, why in the world would I adopt your solution? That seems fairly obvious. A lot of that is based on the assumption that you assume that we know that it's a problem. You talk about, hey, today we're going to talk about how to make how to get people to stop smoking. Everybody knows that. But this is an academic exercise where you're learning how to structure a problem solution speech. You don't get to skip that because you've been, picked a problem everybody's aware of. Okay? You have to, you will be graded if you go back and look at that rubric. You will be graded on problem, uh, uh, cause, and effect, and solution practicality, efficacy. You're going to be graded on that. And if you don't prove that there's a problem, there is no reason for us to adopt your solution. Okay? That should be pretty clear. All right. When you get to the problem, you need to make sure that you prove that the effect is significant. A couple of you had problems that you related only to yourselves. And I'm sure to you that's a significant issue. But to the world at large, it's really not. Please don't take that personally. I said that in, uh, every time that came up. I understand it's a significant problem for you. But if you can't prove that it's a problem for the entire society as a whole and that there is a significant effect, nobody's going to care what your solution is. Okay, Because solutions almost always require an expenditure of resources 
and everybody's going to want some of those resources. And if the only person you're going to help is you, people are going to tell you to fix it yourself. So you have to prove, even if it's something like, and I don't remember if this is one, these are all just going to be generic examples. Even if you're talking about something like depression, okay, depression and mental illness is a huge problem in our society. We all know that. But for the purposes of this speech, if the only proof you give that depression is a problem is that you have had clinical depression, you haven't proved your, 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 your problem is significant. You haven't proved the significance of that effect. Okay? Also, a lot of people are combining cause and effect. They have got to be separate. Because remember, your solution has to deal with the cause. And if you don't give us a cause, or if the cause isn't obvious, we don't know what your solution is solving. Okay? So you have to have, and I, I strongly recommend everybody does this. A lot of you got caught this, and I'm strongly going to recommend you do this as well. Roman numeral 2, problem, A, cause, B, effect, significance. And do your outline that way. That way you're guaranteeing to get everything in. A lot of y'all just leap right from your uh, uh, preview of main points directly into your solution. As if your attention device was all the evidence of the problem you needed. And that is not going to be where you want to be when, when, when I finish filling out the rubrics for this. Okay? So don't assume we know anything because that's not the way I'm going to be grading it. All right? And again, it's the reason why I just got rid of texting and driving as a possible topic because everybody just assume everybody knows that it's a problem and that part of the speech just will always fall apart okay uh a lot of you guys are having problems with solutions a lot of you got it right a lot of you practicality efficacy bam bam and and, and out the door and that those were great and, and i applaud you a lot of you, though, are struggling with the fact that you have to prove that it's going to solve the problem and you have to have a solution to the problem. Again, a lot of you guys are hitting on problems that everybody knows. Is, it, we're all aware of the fact, okay? But then you come up with your solution is education. Uh, people, And again, you can't use this, so it's very easy for me to say this. Uh, I'm not, you know, texting and driving is a problem. Our solution is... We're going to educate people not to text and drive. You don't think we've been trying that since cell phones came out. Okay? Education by itself, unless you is not just the word education is not a solution. You're going to have to, and I put this on your on your uh, the feedback emails I gave you. I need to know when, I need to know where, I need to know who, I need to know how you're going to educate people. Okay, just education as a word is not a solution. Because every problem you're going to cite that is significant enough, we've already tried education. I will give you a pass and say, fine, let's try education again. But you can't just use the word education. I need to know how it's going to be practical. And I need to know how your education program is going to be different than every other education program that's already been tried. Okay, And the one that hits over and over and over again, and every time I get five or six of these, Okay, so I'm not picking on anybody specifically. <clears throat> Just if you pick this topic, take it as additional advice. <clears throat> the, the epidemic of childhood obesity. The solution is eat better. Well, yeah, obviously that's the solution. How are you going to get people to do that is the practicality. You have to prove that you can get people to eat better and then prove to me that eating better will actually solve the problem, okay? So again, if I was you, I would do the outline like this. One, intro, A, attention device, B, statement of purpose, C, qualifications, D, preview of main points, two, problem, A, cause, B, Effects, significance. Main point three, solution. A, practicality. We can make this happen. B, efficacy. It will solve the problem. Main point number four, conclusion. Restatement of purpose. And some of you are still forgetting to restate your purpose in your conclusion. 
four, re conclusion, restatement of purpose, review of your main points, closing talk. I would structure your outline that way. It's that simple. Okay? But again, oh, last thing. And I'm trying to go down my notes. Um, two things, actually. Number one, pick one plan. Don't give me 14 solutions in a four-minute, four to six-minute speech. Pick one and stick with it and tell me how you're going to do it. Okay, I got I got outlines today that had five different things they were going to do. Pick one, prove that you can do it, and prove that it will solve the problem. Okay, don't give me 14 plans because then you're not proving practicality and efficacy for all 14 of those plans. Okay, I had one last semester, and I say 14 is a usual round number. I had one last time that had 13 plans. Okay, second of all, don't have a magic plan. We used to call it in the Army, we're going to sprinkle fairy dust and everything's going to be fine. If your problem is untrained, skilled laborers like machinists, okay, and you show that there's a problem that 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 people aren't going and pursuing the technical vocations in order to get a four-year college degree, great, good problem. The effect is there's currently three million skilled uh, uh, technical positions available in the job market and that's slowing down the US economy. Man, that is great. That is a that is a problem. That gives us the cause. People aren't attending tech schools and it gives us the effect of slowing down the US economy. Great. Your solution cannot be we'll have more machinists. Where are they going to come from? How are you going to make more machinists? You can't just say there will be more machinists. You have to tell us how you're going to make more machinists. Okay? All right. That's problem solution speaking. Just as a reminder, links and outlines are due to be posted in Blackboard. I will open up the, the, the discussion board tomorrow. You don't need to be posting your speech until you see my feedback on your outline anyway. So I will open that up tomorrow. Okay? Uh, and it has to be posted with your link. And please, please, please get somebody else besides you to check to make sure you know, get 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 your cousin that you haven't spoken to in five years. Call your mother-in-law, have her check it, and see, make sure that they can access that link. Okay, because if I can't access it, I don't know that you've done the speech, and I can't allow you to go, oh, 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 I'll fix that. This time, there will be no fixing. If I click it and it doesn't pop up, you're, you, you'll get your grade for your outline, but you won't do, the, you won't get a grade for the speech. Okay? And, uh, as well, again, remember, if you don't highlight the evidence and put it in place where it's going to be used in the speech, I'm, I, you're not going to get credit for the, uh, for the evidence. Okay? We need to focus on that and get these, get these details right so you have that skill set. All right, that's it. Um, you will next be hearing from me probably on uh, some whenever I get the speeches graded, which will probably be first of next week. Uh, I'll keep you up to speed on how everything's going. Otherwise... Uh, remember, I am not in my office tomorrow. I will be in my office Thursday the 5th. Yeah, the 5th. So if you need to speak to me, let me know. Set up an appointment. We'll, I'll give you the alternate. We're, we're not having my, my, my office is just a COVID breeding ground, I think. So we will meet in another room, and I will tell you what that room is when you set up an appointment. Okay, but I am available from about 10 o'clock to about 2.30 on Thursday for appointments. Okay, all right, everybody, get to work on those speeches, fix those outlines and get them in so I can give you a 20 on the outline and you can earn 100 points on those speeches. Don't forget to go back. Once you tape your speech, go back and look at it and make sure that's the uh, version you want to submit. All right, take care, stay safe, stay well, and we will see you soon.